Welcome friend! After the last video ended in a bang, this time we're going to be diagnosing massive engine failure. The main symptoms are lots of smoke in the exhaust, increasing oil level and the sound of the devil himself rattling spanners when the engine's under load. So we're looking at a 1.9 TDI engine that's on lots of VW Audi Group cars. The exact code okay. of this one is a BLS, uh, but that's very similar to this so bunch of other engines. When this failed, although the engine was still going, it was making an ungodly racket and dipping it, the oil level had increased so much that oil was sloshing out the dipstick. Okay, I'll just get my thing ready. Now, we know oil can't just come from nowhere, so the only two possibilities is that either coolant or fuel is it getting is. through into the oil. Holy cow! Okay, it's more liquidy than I imagined. Okay, let's grab a little bit of that one it slows down a little bit. We can rule out the coolant getting in there because the consistency isn't at all milkshake-like and the coolant level hasn't gone down. Okay. The sheer volume of oil here and how thin it is really does lead one to conclude that there's a lot of fuel or diesel that's gone into the oil. So, we have our first clue in our exceptionally amateur detective work. Let's take the sump off before we get into the workshop and see what we find. So I've given the sump a really good ragging down. Put the sump plug back in. We've got a bunch of bolts. These along here. Just all the way around basically. This caddy's always had a slightly unsavoury habit of dripping oil from the sump on people's driveways so it's almost lucky that I'm finally getting around to pulling the sump to have a good look inside and I can fix that problem at the same time or at least that was my thinking. Now actually doing it I feel a bit silly for putting this off for so long. What is it they say about doing the important things not just the urgent? I think this probably fits into the category of job that's easy to get impatient and destroy the sump, knocking it off, but the sealant should come loose with a bit of patience and persistence. So there it is, that's the oil pump chain. Behind that we've got that plastic cover. At this point, because nearly 10 litres of fuel stroke oil mix was drained from the sump, I'm wondering what damage there is and what we're going to find. The oil will have been very diluted, which means it won't have lubricated very well, but also there might be a chance of hydro locking. Now I think it's got oil in it. So we're going to take it off there. Hydro locking is associated with floods when water gets pulled into the air intake. But in this instance, the oil was so high it looks like that got pulled in. So the good news is I've been toweling down the sump and I can't see any debris or bits of engine remaining down here. You can see down in that corner, that's the previous repair that must have happened before we had it and that was what was leaking. So there's another two good bits of evidence, no debris in the sump and oil in the intercooler pipe. At this point I'm deeply suspicious of the tandem pump because of the sheer volume increase in the oil stroke fuel. The tandem pump pressurises and sends the fuel off to the unit injectors but it also acts as a vacuum pump for the brakes. If you want this fueling diagram and this one too somewhat more explained then check out the previous video. The important point for now is that the tandem pump receives fuel and it also has oil to lubricate its spinning parts and the seal between these is suspicious. We've taken the air box and everything out of the way and we've taken the fuel return and supply lines off. So let's have a go at removing this pump. Taking off this vacuum hose back here now. Okay. Okay. One tandem pump. So 
cleaning. Another possible way that fuel can get into the oil is through leaky unit injector o-ring seals. If this happens fuel can run onto the cylinder wall down past the piston and into the crankcase. While this might be a side problem I don't think that's really what's happening here because the crankcase filled so quickly. Now I've certainly never taken a tandem pump apart before so I could be performing all kinds of blunders here. They do sell reseal kits for these tandem pumps, but considering I don't really know what I'm doing, the chances of me putting this pump back on the car seems quite slim. I'm more just curious to see inside and see what failed exactly. I must say the machined, shiny, well-fitting parts of this pump are really quite cool and I'm immediately thinking about ways I might be able to integrate bits into stove fans or other upcycled contraptions. Let's push it off, there it goes. You can see the wear on these parts and I'm really not sure if that's just completely normal for 140,000 miles or excessive. There's plenty of evidence of scrapes around here and wear, but I guess that's what you expect. Little mesh filter. So here we go in here, I can see there's a spring and parts of a seal. Looks like that just exploded. There's our culprit. This shaft gets oil. Carefully. Is it the seal here? The vacuum pump on the other side of this is also kind of a funky, interesting mechanism. But anyway, let's leave that for now. So at this point I'm feeling fairly smug and confident that I found the exact problem that caused this whole dilemma, but I really need to pull this valve cover off and have a look to see the condition of both the camshaft, uh, I was kind of thinking I'd take a look at the injectors and see what's going on basically. So I'm undoing the bolts of the housing, cleaning all around so no grubbins is going to fall in when I open it up. It's all new and exciting to me, I've never gone this far in terms of dismantling a diesel engine before. Opening up the quite literal black box that's been carting me around for the last few years is pretty cool. Whatever, okay let's try this. Ah, finally! Okay, oh there's a good amount of muck there, excellent. With the valve cover off we can see the top of the unit injectors here and the rocker arm which pivots on the rocker shaft and transfers the rotational motion from the camshaft to an up and down motion on the top of the unit injectors. So you can see back here there's obviously been an oil leak and when I came to undo the bolts that one in that corner wasn't even done up at all and those two were quite loose so that kind of explains leaking oil down there as well as the oil being ridiculously thin you can see it's like more diesely oily than oily oily so whenever this valve covers open apparently it's a very good idea to stuff some kind of rag or something into these holes that are just oil passages that go down lower into the engine and that stops the fabled dropped bolt into the engine problem it's not necessary to remove the rockers to get an idea of the condition of the camshaft and in fact if you do undo those stretch bolts they really should be replaced on reinstall. Apparently to avoid stressing the head and the rocker shaft it's a good idea to release tension evenly starting with the outer two bolts and moving to the inner two. The reason I'm taking them off is because you can better judge the condition of both the rockers, 
the top of the injectors and I want to take the unit injectors out and just because I'm curious and I want to give you guys a better look too. It's worth labelling the two halves of the rockers so that they go back in the same place that they came out of. With that out of the way, let me have a go at describing what we're looking for in terms of camshaft where the surface wants to really have a dull, even shine. Very highly polished areas or scoring indicates excessive wear. The unevenness in this one suggests it's really quite badly worn. Another thing to look out for is the chamfer around the edge of the lobes of the shaft. If it's not even round the whole edge, it suggests there's wear, and hopefully on this you can see right at the peak there's basically no chamfer, which means the material has been worn away to such a degree it won't be pushing the tappet below it as much as it should. It also means it's worn through the hardened outer layer, and the speed of future wear will be hugely increased. To make this more clear, let's take you in close to have a look at a different and good camshaft. Here, this nice and smooth. This is the crest of the lobe and that chamfer is continuous. We need a new camshaft, uh, an important bit of evidence for sure. A new camshaft of OEM quality with all the lifters, stretch bolts, gasket and all that kind of thing that you need is about £360. Don't forget we already need a tandem pump which is about £240. So it's not looking super hopeful for this engine. But let's check out the injectors and the turbo. If either of those are shot, we know for sure it's finished. Removing the unit injectors isn't a super simple task, even though there's only one bolt and retaining block thing holding each of them in. They're also stuck there quite firmly with the tightness of their seals. There is a proper VW sliding hammer tool that you can use to pull these out. I tried a few different methods that didn't really work. Break the wire. Before settling on this method where I'm hooking around an old bit of webbing and I'm levering off the head of the block itself. Getting them out this way worked a absolute treat on some of the unit injectors. In fact, it was a nice controlled civilized treat with a wrapper and on others of them, it was much more like a cream pie to the face, but we'll get to that. Again, it's probably a good idea to plug up these holes and prevent bolts and bits falling down. See how nicely and controlled this number three one comes out. As I'm getting them out and examining them, I'm realising how deep and murky my ignorance pool is here. I'll share everything I've learnt with you though. The fourth one was just being very stubborn. Professionals of sensitive machine parts everywhere are now smashing their heads through their monitors, but they came out. And looking at them, the seals don't look too bad. The tips are quite gunged, but I don't know how normal that is. Here's the full complement. They have three seals, that red one at the bottom and then two O-rings further up. To my ignorant eye, the spring and cap and the O-rings all look okay. If you have a look at these barely visible holes here that fuel passes through, you can see why it's so important to have the fuel properly filtered. So in truth, I'm not sure quite what to make of these without having them sent off and properly tested. Uh, coming closer to the turbo. Mm, there it goes. Okay. What are we dealing with? Good amount of grubbiness. Um, I'll have a look in there. Having had to take the intercooler pipe off, anyway, it's relatively easy to see in the turbo, and if I'm not way off base, it kind of looks okay to me. Oily, yes, but it moves freely and without play, and there's not shards of impeller everywhere. So I took the ERG valve off, and here's what I see. I didn't know exactly what to expect, but this does look worse than my wood stove.
I've been holding out on you slightly. Do you remember this from last time when we converted the van to run on vegetable oil? Remember the bit when we ransacked my dad's old car for bits we could possibly use? One bit was the lift pump for the new auxiliary diesel tank and I'm fairly sure both the pressure and flow rate of that was just too much for the poor tandem pump to deal with. Probably that contributed to the blasting of the seal. I don't know how that fits with the rest of this video, but I wouldn't have been able to rest easy without admitting my blunder there. Enough to say I'm now using a different pump. The scrap engine's arrived. This is a working engine, or it should be, and it was actually cheaper than just getting just the crankshaft and new tandem pump. So, and that's before we even look at like all the injectors and other stuff. Now let's unwrap it and see what we've got. After general inspection, it looked pretty good. And one of the first things I did with this was to pull the ERG valve and have a good clean of that while the engine's off. It's so much easier to access everything. In fact, I ended up cleaning the manifold too. The other thing I did was to pull the valve cover and have good inspect of the camshaft, which I think is a reasonable indication of the condition of the engine as a whole and how it's been looked after. Incidentally, if you are changing your camshaft, there's a great tutorial by MyTurboDiesel.com that's the YouTube username. I'll leave a link in the description. As a side note, when you put the valve cover back on, here's the suggested order of torquing the bolts, which should be done to 10 newton meters. If you want to see an enthusiastic amateur removing and installing a full engine or attempting to, then I'll leave a link on the right here. Apart from that, peace and love. See you next time.